as above, so below. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. I'm a psychiatrist. I study coincidences. And I invite you to come to the Coincidence Cafe, uh, which meets the third Saturday of each month from 11 to 12.30. And we tell each other coincidence stories and other things too. So you can get to it by going to the coincidenceproject.net or go to my website, um, coincider.com, C-O-I-N-C-I-D-E-R. And you can see uh, links to signing up and registering for the Coincidence Cafe. And my story today is uh, one of those little small ones that are, are we all, if you look around, you'll have them. And some of them are just coincidences that are lovely and they're only there to be enjoyed in the moment. Um, I was uh, hanging around with uh, my friends, the trees in the forest and a few yards from my usual place, I was crying because um, I was looking at a video uh, on my phone of my grandson, Max. Uh, I was really happy looking at this video. He was, he was four uh, and he really liked Batman. And I'd gotten, some bat, gotten in some Batman booklets and Legos of his hero. hero. I bought him a Batman outfit. Uh, which he wore, he wears around a lot still. And it was not lost on him that uh, his name, Beitman, B-E-I-T-M-A-N, sounds a lot like Batman. Replace the E-I with an A and you got Batman, Batman Beitman, which I've been called by other people myself. So I was enjoying Max Batman. And I looked up from my happy, joyful crying and a family of five was coming towards me and the last one was a boy about Max's age with a Batman shirt on and I, I said hi Batman it was a nice moment oh how cute <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was really nice <laughs> it was really nice um, as you can as you can hear, we have a guest today. <laughs> it's Lilia Lillian Fortna, and she's an energy healer, a Reiki master, and the author of Winks from Above. It's a it's a book for for you to pay attention to. Uh, the first half of it is about her difficult childhood, and when you say difficult, it was very difficult. But it's one of those childhoods that at least. <laughs> for some people, becomes uh, an opening to spiritual adventures. And that's what it came for her. Uh, she overcame adversity through her close alignment with the spiritual world. She's highly intuitive, and she receives mes messages and assistance from her guides and angels. Uh, we know each other, so she she's ends up talking about these guides and angels that look like a bunch of bees buzzing around her, but it's actually something else. Uh, and she's talking to them, and they're around her right now, I bet you, and uh, giving her a little advice about how to do this. They help carry her through some very difficult events, which you can read about in her book. There are, they're pretty amazing to see what you've got now and on your camera screen here, as well as how she got to be where she where she is now after a lot of the very, very difficult circumstances she went through. She's been a professional dancer. I try to get her to dance with me. Maybe she'll go to dance with me sometime. Uh, a European fashion model, um, a fashion consultant, and, a and a, an Amazon rainforest explorer. Uh, we can't show you the photos of her in the Amazon, but man, some of the stuff she was doing in the deepest, darkest jungle with some amazing people that she met in the forest. Uh, quite an adventure. Uh, she's French Vietnamese by birth, grew up in France and has lived in Europe, Asia. And now she's uh, a couple of miles away from me here in Charlottesville, Virginia, which I am very glad has happened for a lot of different reasons. So Lilia, welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. Thank you so much for having me, Bernie. 
you know, it's great having you here uh, and being able to read your book and tell people about it and uh, do our usual thing, which I'd like to ask you to ask you to tell us a coincidence story. All right. Um, there is one that stands out all the time because it was so fantastic. Um, it's a cat I had when we lived in Belgium, in Brussels. There was a lot of wind, and one night our cat disappeared. For three days, I could not, I asked around, I went to see the neighbors, I put posters, we couldn't find the cat. Then I had a dream, and I saw my cat in a dark cellar. The amazing thing is that there was a fireplace in the cellar. I mean, I never heard or seen anything like that. So the next day, in the morning, I just dismissed my dream. And in the afternoon, I went to the little grocery store close by. And as I entered, there was a woman talking to the manager and said, yeah, you have to do something about it. I can hear it behind the door. And the manager said, I don't have the time for that and moved away. The woman was going to leave, so I ran after her. And which is something very unlikely for me to do, but I felt I had to do that. And I asked her, what were you talking about? And she said, well, you know, the building, I mean, three, three buildings further uh, belongs to, to this man and it's in renovation. And for the past three days, I hear a cat behind the door and I know the workers are not there. You know, the, 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 the I mean, all the reparation they are doing have not uh, been done lately. So there is a cat stuck in that building. So I went with the woman. There was a little space underneath the door. So I put my hand and I felt a little head come into my hand. I knew it was my cat. She was very small. So I went back to the store, asked the manager to please open the door. And he said he doesn't have the key, but he would call uh, someone to come and open it. So he did. And it was a young man with me. As soon as he opened the door, the cat saw both of us and she got scared. So she ran to the back of what was going to be a store and um, she disappeared. So we followed her and, they were, and there was a stairwell, a very steep stairwell going down into the basement. And uh, the young man had <clears throat> a phone, so he turned on the light, and it was still very dark as we walked down. And there was a fireplace and my cat. <laughs> I was shivering. I mean, how did that happen? See, these are things sometimes you, you ask yourself, well, well, what happened? Did my cat send me images what was there a connection i needed to find her what happened so sometimes through dreams you find very very interesting uh solutions or answers to what you're looking for so anyway that that still remains a, a puzzle in some ways and something that, uh, that that sticks in my mind because it was so unlikely to happen and what was unlikely was that you had the image of the cat in the fireplace Yes, and, and when I saw the fireplace, and it was the same, you know, in my dream, it was dark, but I could see a fireplace and the cat was there. And so it was when I went downstairs. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why it was there. But in any case, I was contacted and it was accurate. So this type of things happen more often than we think. Sometimes we dismiss it, like I could easily have dismissed it altogether. But this time I was like pushed to go to the store. Normally I went in the morning, but that time I went in the afternoon. Why did I go to the store at the precise time I could hear the woman talk to the manager? I mean, it was a matter of half a minute, I would have missed it. So yeah, those, those things um, were meant to be, I was meant to find my cat. But when, when you see all the little pieces that were put together, it was very unlikely in many ways, unless I paid attention. You said you felt pushed. Could you tell us more about that? Well, in the sense that now, I, 
you know, normally I went in the morning to get some groceries. I did not that day. And then in the afternoon, something said, oh, you should go to the store now. And I don't remember I had anything very pressing to, to buy, but I felt I had to go to the store. <clears throat> so that's, um, it's like somebody, that's why I call my guides, my angel, somebody made, nudged me to go to the store at that precise time. I mean, again, it was a matter of <clears throat> a half a minute. I would have missed the person altogether. No, so I, I love, I love <laughs> that. I love those stories of a half a minute either way, and it wouldn't have worked. Uh, there, there are lots of stories like that for sure. It's also the the feeling the nu the nudge is a is a story, but uh, that I've heard before from a lot of people. That's why I ask you about it. But I think when you tell us about it, you feel like your angels are giving you the nudge. Yeah, where does that come from? I mean, where? And because of so many events in my life, that happened because I, I followed guidance, I followed my intuition, I happened to see something at the right time, and that triggered something in my mind to do something, etc. Sometimes it was just a matter of, you know, seconds. One that sticks to mind now, um, I was in a car years ago in Germany on the highway and people drive very fast on the highway and um, I was with uh, with a man who was an excellent driver and suddenly he veered to the right I mean real fast and stopped on the side of the highway and I looked at him and then we heard bum, bum, car crashing behind we would have been in that pile he had no idea when I said, what happened? He said, I, I don't know. So again, for him, he was literally pushed to do that move so fast. And again, it was a matter of maybe <clears throat> half, a, half a minute, something like that. So again, yeah, it's, it's fascinating what's happening. It's really fascinating and it happens to all of us, except many people do not notice. They don't see that they have the possibility, they have the choice, and they, they, they just miss it. And they just miss, miss it. What do they miss, Julia? They miss the signs, they miss the, the intuition, whatever pushes them, you know, when I've, when, I went to the store, for instance, in the afternoon. It was, oh, I should go to the store now. And, and I could have told myself, nah, you don't have anything to buy. You know, I could have gone back and forth and not gone. But this time I felt, okay, well, I'm going to the store. And for that man, he had absolutely no choice. It went so fast. He had no clue. He looked at me puzzled because he, he had absolutely no clue why he did that. But then <laughs> we knew why but we don't know how it was caused for him to just move to the side so fast. It's like a guardian angel to me was yeah. protecting us and, and helping us to just move to the side at the right time. And I have so many stories of other people too like that who are saved of pot potential danger. Um, it happened so many times and in so many different ways. Um, I have another friend, for instance, and that's in my book. <clears throat> she was uh, visiting an area, I think it's in Colorado, that one area, um, and the realtor gave her the key of the property she was supposed to visit because he didn't have the time to go, but she could go by herself. She arrived, she parked near Lake, she walked, she looked around, she came back, and the path she was supposed to take to go back to the car, there were three or four snakes waiting for her. And she felt, and at that time she was not a believer, but she felt that she was suddenly pushed forward and moved this way. And she landed behind the snakes and ran to the car. 
She doesn't have any recall that she tried to jump. She felt like moved up and moved forward, landed behind the snakes. And she was still absolutely stunned by the whole story. I tried to explain to her what could have happened, but it's something that and she was by herself. There was absolutely nobody. It was totally dies. Uh, I mean, if she had an accident, nobody could have come to help her. So that was something very special for her to to have that happen. But she has no clue. She felt whoop, elevated and moved forward. That that's how she felt without doing anything. So afterwards, she. She was in her car shaking and say, what happened? <laughs> you know, so it, it comes in so many, so many different ways. It's fascinating, really. And the more we open up, the more we get rid of the blocks that prevent us from connecting with our guides, connecting with the angels, seeing the signs, the more we get rid of all that, the more often we see them. But there is a little bit of work to do on our part because all of us have blockages. And when we are blocked, it could be depression, it could be fear, it could be anger, it could be hatred, it could be ego, it could be beliefs that are also preventing you from opening up in different directions. Um, when we when we open up, when we get rid of a lot of these blockages, then suddenly things appear. And there is so much joy in it. Um, because I feel that my guides are sometimes very funny things I hear. At the moment, it's, eh, please, no. <laughs> and afterwards, I said, this was too funny, the way things are said. Sometimes I hear something that uh, I'm not pleased right away. And it's afterwards I say, yeah, that was funny. That was a... <laughs> um, so when, when you, when you are that in that state of opening up, being in touch with your guides, your angels, seeing all the signs. And when I say spirit guides, it's not only your personal guides, like ancestors or people who have lived and uh, on the other side, it could it could also be um, animal spirits, such as birds, for instance. Um, I hear often of people who um, have loved ones who are gone. And for instance, a lady was telling me about her mother. She knows her mother is close by when she sees a certain bird. Another lady, it's an hawk that she sees, that's her father, et cetera. So sometimes they they try to get in touch with their loved ones, and then there will be a little, a little sign somewhere uh, showing them that it's okay, they're fine. Um, it's, um, it's a joyful experience to me. And of course, life is not always very easy, but when you have this contact, it allows you to move away from all the negativity you, you're in, you're surrounded by, and gradually make your way out of it. Um, and it allows you to see positivity more often, instead of being always in a part of negativity, it allows you to suddenly see better and, and have all these wonderful little things around you, nature, for instance, that can bring so much joy on a daily basis. Right now, I'm going to tell you of something very joyful I have right below my window. I created a mini pond three years ago. And I have a frog, it's big, it's about that big. It's, it's a copper color, very beautiful, with a green, with a green line just around the mouth. And it was here last year and it came back this year. And it's absolutely adorable. I'm happy when I go outside, I named her Fifi. 
And when I see Fifi, I talk with Fifi, and it's 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 a pretty adorable for me. It's something that uh, that is easy for children to do, but I think as adults, we have to remember that all these little things that are around us can bring us so much joy too. And that's why we have oftentimes to look at life with the eyes of a child. And this is a one specific case where when I'm with my little frog, I'm just with my little frog. I don't think of anything else. It gives my soul some respite. And I enjoy the, the beauty of, uh, of the frog sitting in front of my little Buddha. I have a little Buddha. And the other day she was sitting right in front looking at Buddha and that was so adorable. I took a picture, of course. Little things like that, you know, that make life, everyday life so much more joyful and brings even little things that are wonderful for your heart. How do you help people um, reach to the place that uh, you're describing? Well, there are different ways, and that's in my book, part three. After I describe the blockage, the blockages, I um, describe ways of reopening. And reopening could be one of the exercises, for instance, is take a walk in nature, but to be very open, to be in the moment. So as you walk, try not to think of dinner tonight or something you said in the morning, etc. but just listen to your steps, maybe gravel at first, maybe there is a brook or a river not very far and you hear the, the water, Maybe there is the rustling of the leaves and it tells you how much wind there is or air, maybe birds. I mean, there are so many things you can listen, then open your eyes as well and look at the sky, maybe through the branches. What color is the sky? Maybe you see a bird, etc. So use all your senses, you know, all your, um, how does it smell? Did it rain the day before? Does it still smell like rain, etc.? And by doing so, it's reopening yourself to all these little things. And maybe, maybe who knows? There might be a bird not very far from you on a branch just above looking at you. Maybe it has meaning for you. Maybe it's related to an ancestor. I don't know. You know, all this is very personal. But as you as you do things like that, certainly one little thing might bring um, a thought of something else, etc., and lead you towards um, maybe a solution to a situation you were wondering about, etc. So this is one. Another one that is very important is to um, start the day with gratitude. Starting the day with gratitude, we open your heart. Have a meditation. What I love to do as well is a meditation, but blended with movements. So to me, it will be dance. And when I say dance, I'm not saying dance like a dancer with all the technique, etc. Dance could be to start with something very simple. Either you have music, that you like, or you listen to the sound of nature if you're outside, and then you may be seated to start with very quietly. And then certainly maybe the wind might suddenly want to make your arm move. And then suddenly, oh, your arm wants to your body to move. And then suddenly your legs are moving and suddenly you're moving around with the wind and you, you make sure nobody is around. The point is not to perform. The point is to use your body as an extension of your soul. And it's, it's, uh, it captures all that is, all the energy in the air. You feel the wind. You go with the wind. Where does it go? Where, the speed, etc., And then it brings in you so much 
beauty and calm. So at the end, when you're done, you're ready to go to a next stage. Maybe you want to talk to your guide. You have a question to ask. You're so much more open that it will be so much easier for you to get an answer. So that's that's one of the ways. There are other ways too, is to sometimes find the inner child, the child that we keep bottled up in, in us most of the time. It's very important to bring that child out because it's still there. And when you were a little child, you were still connected to the spirit guides, etc. cetera. Um, little children talk to elements of nature and, and they see things that uh, we don't see anymore. So anyway, bring that little child out and find the joy that little child has when you look at little things in nature. And by looking through the eyes of a child, there will be so much more beauty coming to, uh, to you. Um, and, and all these makes your soul expand and, and yourself expand. And when, you're, when you are in that stage, it's so much easier to perceive what's around you, to hear, to see, to smell, sometimes even to taste, or sometimes just to feel. Sometimes things come to you, you have no clue how it comes, but you know it's right there. So that's what I would advise to you. And there are exercises to do, um, but all the exercises I, get, I give are very, very simple. Anybody can do them. You don't need anything special. It's just right there or right outside. You, de you describe some of the exercises in your book, uh, as you mentioned, the third part of your book. Could you just, you, I think you've just told us uh, some of the, some that you've just, that you suggest, uh, mm -hmm. the inner child being able to um, go with the wind, to feel mm -hmm. with the wind and let the wind move, move your soul, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other exercises you'd like to mention? Well, there is one actually that is not in my book, but because it came afterwards, <clears throat> it's it's connection. You need a little bit of imagination, but <clears throat> my granddaughter a year ago did not like sting bugs. She really could not stand them. So um, she wanted to play in a grassy area near the house, but there was a sting bug. So I said, okay. Put your hands on your heart. Close your eyes. And now, can you see the sting bug in your mind? I say, now you talk to the sting bug. Tell her that you understand that it's her home, but you'd like to play right here for just a little while. And she's scaring you. <laughs> that, that. I saw the steam bug move away. <laughs> so I said, Olivia, open your eyes. Oh, oh, she heard, she heard. <laughs> and I said, well, from now on, when something is bothering you, just do that. With, there are people around, go in your corner and, and do that and put whatever bothers you in your mind and change it. And, uh, you know, so there are little things like that we can do with imagination um, that allow us to see life in a more positive way. For instance, a um, couple of examples that I give in my, in my book. Uh, for one month, I had a, a tube going from a pouch through my nose into my stomach. That's how I was fed for one month. And... People would wonder about that, aren't you bothered? And so I created something for me. I was not bothered at all. I said, look, that part here, that's my, my buffet line. So I can have anything I want, really. <laughs> it's not fattening, it's perfect. I always go through my diet. <laughs> and I would look at it and think of what I wanted that night. It was biscuit or whatever I wanted. And then I would make it, I would feel it. And I was fine. I mean, for one month, I had absolutely no 
problem. So that's another thing uh, with an MRI. When you go for an MRI, nobody likes that, you know, the tube, etc. Uh, so I found a way <clears throat> that helps. It's uh, <clears throat> when you're pushed in, first of all, it feels warm and very bright. So my eyes are closed. I feel the sun, the sun above me, the blue sky. And then I start hearing, pum, 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 pum. oh, I'm on a boat. Okay, so the boat is, is moving along the shore. That's Hawaii right here. <laughs> so I spend my 30, 40 minutes on a boat <laughs> along the coast of Hawaii, and I'm fine. Even one time they had to wake me up because I fell asleep. So um, there are little things like that that we can change. Um, there are many things we can do just with our mind, you know, for things that are annoying, but we can't avoid. So let's try to change the way we see them and make even a little game with that. So that's one of the way to make everyday life a little bit easier. And when I say that, it's because when you're not bugged down by negativity, you can see signs much better. You can hear your guides, you, you, all these are there. But when you're bugged down, no, you don't see anything. Could you tell us something about your experience of the guides? You are alluding to the guides now uh, fairly, fairly often in what you're saying, but somehow you, you have a, a personal relationship and some of the guides uh, are more defined than just guides that they have characteristics themselves. Could you tell us about them? Yes, um, it took me a while actually to realize what was happening because for most of my life, I had these things happening, but I, I would not put them, say that they were guides or so not just synchronicity or coincidence or whatever, you know, like a lot of people do. It's later on when I became a healer and then during my illness that really, I said, you've got to, to, to find out what it is so you can explain it to other people. So some of the guys that I have seen all along, even when I did not understand who they were, um, were older men, usually tall, slender, very spry, um, and they showed up, one in Athens, one in Chicago at the airport, <laughs> one in Paris, one in Venice, so anywhere. And they were, um, the one in Venice, for instance, um, I was walking in an area of Venice where it's not too safe, but I was not too aware of that at the time, but it's not very safe. And I was by myself and suddenly I had a man, very well dressed, all in black, very old man, grabbed my elbow very nice, I mean, gently, and then guided me away from that area. And he simply told me that um, it's not very safe for a woman alone in this area, okay? And because in Italian, no problem communication. So we walked back to the center of town, to St. Marco Square. As soon as we arrived to that area, I, I turned, I wanted to say thank you to him. He was gone. <laughs> and I, I'm not dreaming, I remember. I can still feel the feel on my, on my elbow of him pulling me away from that area and talking to me. And so that's one. Um, another one was in Paris. And um, I needed to take a cab to go back to uh, the train station. I was going back home that evening. I'd spent a whole weekend in Paris taking a, a class on mediumnity, et cetera. <clears throat> and uh, um, the taxi driver came out of, of the cab. He was very old, but moved very spryly, grabbed my heavy suitcase with no effort, put it at the bag. And, sat back down and he was nicely dressed. And then um, 
He explained to me that we won't be able to take the regular way because there is an accident. We'll have to take another way, which is longer, but we'll make it on time. Fine. I thought maybe he wants more money. That's why he's taking a longer way, you know, but I was not going to. I, I spent time with mediumity, meditation, so it was very cool <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that evening. Anyway, so he started and he spoke to me in a very, very beautiful French, but more like a professor than a taxi driver. And he started to talk about mediumity, oneness with the universe, etc. Huh? A taxi driver, you know, and I, I had not started the conversation. He started it. And he was looking at me through the rearview mirror more than he looked at the traffic. It was almost, oh my God, we're going to crash. But for some reason, I felt a little bit concerned, but at the same time, very calm. Why? Then we made it to the train station. I was surprised that I had to pay less than usual. And then I um, got my suitcase out. Then he took my hand between his two hands. He looked at me straight in the eyes and said, we'll meet again. I mean, whoa. I mean, I, I was, I was, shaken by the whole thing and the next day I called my shaman and said you don't get it it's a guide who came there to reinforce what you did the whole week <laughs> at least that was his interpretation but the fact that that man was behaving the way he did in a taxi was very very unusual and then the fact that he um, said to me we'll meet again that was also very strange so that's another one. And um, well, there was another one here too, but there was another one who set me on my path to learn uh, chromotherapy, to use colors in healing. I was in Chicago waiting in line on my plane and a very, very well-dressed man, but this time more like a South American, you know, the old style with a linen suit, white linen suit and a white hat. Started to talk to me. I was dressed very colorful, but always matching. So he was admiring and, and saying all kinds of things. Normally I would have said, oh God, he's trying to make out. But this time it was different for some reason. There was something different. It was talking about color and I was, it made me think, I wish I could use colors in my healing. Never heard of colors in healing, except yeah, stones, etc. but that's different. But this is what I had in mind. The next day I was in Brussels, I looked at the uh, newspaper, the expatriate newspaper, and there was an ad of somebody teaching chromotherapy. It was a four week six week course in person. And um, unfortunately the date was at the date where I was going to be in Portugal for another course. So I said, I'm going to call the lady. I did and she said, well, since I just put the ad, um, I can change the date to accommodate your, your schedule. <laughs> and she did. And I studied with her. So, it was something I had here, but because of what the man said at the airport in Chicago, it really triggered the whole thing. The next day, it was, if that's not synchronicity, I don't know what it is. I put the paper, it was right there, called. The lady said, oh, I'm going to change to accommodate your schedule. <laughs> so I had to follow the path, definitely. You had and it to, goes on and on and on and on. You had to follow the path, and you gave us three examples of guides in physical form coming mm -hmm. to help you. And mm -hmm. this, this last one, you mentioned uh, synchronicity. Um, and one of the things that I know you do is help people increase uh, the meaningful coincidences in their own lives. Mm -hmm. I, wonder if, I wonder if you could tell us some of how you help people do that. Well... <clears throat> I'm starting with that. 
uh, <clears throat> I have a group now I'm teaching. <clears throat> they read my book via a book club and they asked me to teach because they want to know more. <clears throat> there are exercises, but I would, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but they, they would like me to, to teach them more. So I decided to create a course for them. So right now, I don't know how long it will take because they are my beta group, which means I create for them a class every other week. And then that helps me to build a full seminar, which I intend on having ready by the end of the year. And at the same time, I'm cre creating an uh, in-person seminar, maybe two weekends or one weekend, we'll see. So that's how I will inform people on what to do and all the people interested to find out more and increase you know, the, 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 the joy that they, 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 they could have in life, increase their ability, of course, to see the signs, interpret them, use them, will be done via classes. Of course, in my book, uh, I give a lot of details for those who want to get started, but I will go on and uh, go into a much more uh, a deeper uh, version of all these exercises and um, in order to help people. For instance, lately, I had something that I created uh, that I'm giving my group right now, but that's what I will, that I intend to do when um, I will teach seminars. <clears throat> One of the things I advise people to do is to write or keep a synchronicity journal. It's very good to do so because sometimes things take time. Sometimes there is six months or a year or more. So in a, when you have a synchronicity journal, you, you're aware of what, what's happening. Now, I know a lot of people don't have time nor the desire to write a full, even a full paragraph or some about what's happening. So what I've created is, um, first of all, it's a guideline. And so in the guideline, what I tell people is uh, choose a journal, develop awareness, record synchrony, and use prompts and questions, etc. Then um, afterwards, I talk about the chart for those who don't want to uh, keep a, or, or write every day in their journal. So the synchronicity chart has a date, the time, um, description, etc. So I gave some examples, that's for my students. And um, afterwards, this is what it's going to be. So what people can do is dead time, description, thought feelings at the time. It doesn't have to be long, just what come to mind. Because in a month or a few days or a month or six months from now, they might say, oh, it actually started right here. You see, I actually had a sign right here. And sometimes it's fun for yourself to see um, that you follow the sign. Could you tell us what you could you tell us what you mean? Could you tell us what you mean by signs? By signs? Oh, the signs, there are so many different ways. It could be a bird perched right here, and that bird right away in your mind is maybe your grandmother because she absolutely loved that. Yeah. Uh, it could be um, a whiff of a cake. Maybe your aunt used to bake and it takes you back to your childhood because each time you went there, it was a cake for you and it takes you back there. It could mean that that aunt is around you ready to help so you can talk maybe. It could be um, something you, you hear, which is called clear audience. There, there are four different clear, I mean, it's uh, clear audience, clear uh, voyance, clear sentience, clear cognizance, etc. Uh, they are defined that way because it's easier to put some signs under them, but oftentimes they are 
interwoven. For instance, when, if you see something on your mind, you can also hear in your mind at the same time, a conversation that you had with somebody that you see right here in your mind eye, for instance. I mean, they, they are, they, oftentimes it's, uh, it's interwoven, but basically you get the signs through your senses. So is it visual? Is it audible? Is it something you hear within your own uh, head? Or is it something that is from the outside, but it reminds you of something or leads you to something? I have a good example right there. I have a friend who was studying to become a healer. And in summer, she went to the southern part of France in the Pyrenees, which is a mountainous area, beautiful between Spain and France. And she was hiking in the mountain, and suddenly she heard a little voice calling her. She looked around. She was not the type of person, you know, to believe in everything. So she, huh? but she heard it again and again. And then she came closer and came to a little flower on the ground. So she picked it up take a sample and she went to a library when she returned down to the town and she found out that it was a plant used in the middle ages for meditation I, I forgot which uh, for which element it was but so that gave her the idea to study plants and now as a healer she has a line of essential oil that she created but that's how it started with a little voice guiding her towards a plant and suddenly she is a, so you know how did that happen i mean it's it's a funny story to start with a little voice yeah a little voice a, a flower calling me yeah, right but now she creates um essential oil essential oils so you know it's it can come from so many so many different ways when you when you, describe, be... when you describe signs, what you what uh, what I heard is that you're saying they come through what are our usual what we think are our, our usual senses, which include hearing and seeing and smelling and maybe even feeling, um, like touch, uh, are, mm -hmm. are, and they come the ones you're talking about now. And I thought you mentioned that urges or nudges are also part of what you mean by signs. Um, uh, is, that, is, is that part of your what you're say, saying as a sign? Yeah, let me, I have here a little bit more, very short definition. A clairvoyance is the ability to see beyond the physical realm. So it's, it's your mind eye. Clear audience, it involves the ability to hear beyond ordinary, ordinary sound. So that's in your mind. Clear sentience is the ability to feel energy and emotions, but you don't, you don't know. It's just something that, that you pick up. It's, it's the energy around that you pick up, and you, 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 it's probably the vibration of the people around you, and you feel if they're unhappy, if, uh, you know, a, a lot of negative or positive things. The clear cognizance is spontaneous knowledge, and you don't have any logical explanation. My son had a lot of these type of things when he was little, and I was asked, how do you know? That was his answer. <laughs> I just know. <laughs> so there is that too. And we, we oftentimes have that deep inside. We know what, what, is, what is right, what we should do, etc. cetera. Clear gustance is the ability to test without physically consuming anything. So again, um, it could be a sense, but sometimes you have the, you know, if you, if you have that smell of a cake, coming to your mind about, you know, your aunt who used to bake something fantastic. You might also have the flavor at the same time, you know, or you could have that flavor without the smell. So again, <clears throat> um, yeah, and the clear olfaction 
is the ability to smell scents that are not present in the physical environment. So all these things we can perceive, and most of us do, um, except most of us will, will use one or two, and then the others maybe not quite as often. It's very rare for people to use all of them, but it's not unusual, clear audience. You hear something? Oh. Let me um, add something very uh, strange about clear audience. I was, uh, I was going for a CAT scan and it was not going the way I usually do because they put like a page on my face. I was like pinned down and it was going on for over an hour and the noise was horrendous. I was almost ready to panic at some point because I had it and said, you can't do that. So I said, help, I need help. That's when I called guides, whoever can come. And suddenly I felt like the embrace of uh, an angel uh, with the wings. I mean, that was the, the effect. I felt surrounded by softness around the whole machine I was in. <laughs> and my heartbeat started to go down. It was very high. It started to go down. I could breathe normally. And then at the same time, I heard very clearly Obama Bofi, that's the way my father would talk to me. And it was his voice. And I knew he was there too. And I ended up perfectly fine in the machine. <laughs> Everything was down. Um, I was perfectly relaxed. So yeah, you can call your guides whenever you need. In that case, I said, you're not going to push the panic button. But I heard, I heard my father, which was something very interesting because it's not something I do very often, but he was there. So I thanked everybody. It's very important to thank uh, whoever came to, to help, to be grateful for that. But that's, that's a, a perfect, uh, it's a clear audience that, that, that I had uh, and I was absolutely was not expecting it, but it was his voice with the type of words he would have used to, to speak to me. So, <laughs> and right away, heart rate, everything went down, and I felt so much better. So you know, whatever helps, we have it's it's there for us. So let's use it. I was walking along the uh, the trail at the Ravana River um, last Sunday. And uh, I heard um, what sounded like a light horn sound, uh, like that. And so um, I stopped and turned around. And I thought somebody behind me was had a horn on a bicycle that might have been alerting mm -hmm. me to coming. Well, well, I turned around. There was no bicycle. There was no horn. Uh, there were two people walking, one of whom I was really delighted to see. So I, I stood there. As the as the pair walked by, and uh, it was I didn't know these people, but it was fun to see them, and it was just it was just an opportunity to have a, a nice contact with somebody briefly. That the horn that wasn't there, uh, or at least mm -hmm. could have been going across the bridge up there, but I don't think so. It reminds me of uh, Claire Audience hearing something that's not there, like the woman with the flower and. The thing about her is that she heard the sound and she pursued it. She heard the small voice and pursued it. And I think what you're trying to suggest to our audience is that when they hear these strange things happening or see them, they should not only pay attention, but pursue them in some form because there might be something there that's useful to them. Yes, and, and always keep, keep an open mind and see, I, I named my book Wings from Above because there is something playful in wings. That's what I wanted. There is something, it's not that serious. It's, there's something slightly playful. And I find that by approaching it that way, it makes the whole thing so much lighter. Nothing is heavy, it's lighter. And sometimes it can be funny. I have one story, my, um, usually I get up in the middle of the night, 3.30, 4, sometimes 5, to write. And my husband, when he gets up, um, 
Emperor's Coffee. And this time it might have been more like five o'clock. And it tapped lightly my leg to ask me if I wanted coffee because it, you know, I, I write in the dark. So I was seated, he could see me move. So he, he knew I was awake. He did not realize I was in an altered state. And when he touched me, whew, it's like if I crashed and I was so shocked, I started crying. And, <laughs> you know, it took me a while to just come back. And finally, I was fine. And I started writing again. Then I heard very clearly from somewhere, not too far. Um, there were probably three snickering. And then I heard, it was a bit dramatic, wasn't it? And then I was, this is not funny. I was not happy at the time. <laughs> I did not take it as something nice. But then now I think of it often because it's too funny, you know? Somebody up there thought it was so entertaining what happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, and, and I told them a while back because I, I don't like things that are too complicated. So I told them a while back, I said, look, I'm tired of looking up, it breaks my neck. So you're good friends, you're around me, we talk. <laughs> so that's how I converse with them. They're with me when I go on a walk. They're, they're with me in the room like good friends, but I'm not, oh, please come down. No, uh, this is not my style. I like, I like to be direct and I talk to them like it's it's normal. It's just normal. And uh, um, it's important to trust, to have, it's important to trust it. Um, so th there are lots of things that we have to do on ourselves before we reach that point, but it's not tremendous. If you want to do it, it is possible. And I gave the guidelines in my book with exercises to do. It's not very complicated. So if I've been able to do it, I think everybody can, um, because I had some real challenges as a child, but I took these challenges actually late. It took me a long time. But finally, I reached a point to not only forgive the people who have been very difficult towards me, I not only uh, forgive them, but I'm also thanking them. And that's a nudge. I mean, that's, that's a little step forward because it's not easy. Believe me, it was not easy. But I felt free when I was able to say, yes, and because of you, I'm able to do this. I'm a strong woman. I'm able to do this. I can help others. I know what they are going through. I understand. And if I had not had the childhood I had, I would not be to that point. So I think what you're I'm thanking what, him now. What you're able to do, which is very difficult for all of us to do, is thank the people who created a lot of adversity for you. To be able to thank the people who created a lot of adversity for you, because that adversity has contributed to the strength and flexibility and resilience that you have now. And uh, we have to be flexible as we come to the end of our time together today. Uh, so uh, I want to be able to show um, our viewers and listeners your book, Winks from Above, uh, Lillian Portnett's book, um, which describes a lot of that childhood we just uh, alluded to and how she's come through it uh, amazingly. Uh, with all the adventures she's had in her life, some of which you'll get a sense for when you read the first half of the book, as well as uh, some of the examples at the second half of the book that she'll help you be able to learn about uh, winks from above, synchronicities, and angel guides. 
So thank you very much, Lillian. Is there anything that you'd like to leave our audience with? Yes, we uh, it, comes, it comes with a workbook that you can download for free. At the end of the book, you go to my website and you can download the, the it's a 15 page that allows you to, as you read the book, to jot down ideas that come back because all of you will have at least one, if not many, many examples of synchronicity that happened to you. So anyways, you read the book, you have a guideline and you can jot things down. So that's, that's, that's very useful. And one thing to remember, all of us, all of you, is that we are never alone, never. There is always help somewhere. So I hope that uh, you'll be able to be in touch with your guides, your spirit guides, your angels, and whoever can help you out there. Well, thank you very much for that uplifting, joyful message from you. So uh, thank you, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. This psychosphere is a mental atmosphere. Cosmic consciousness